what if Mega Mewtwo X and Mega Mewtwo Y were in Gen 1 OU? Thank you everyone for supporting this series because I now have done over 100 episodes of the What If Pokemon series and only 5 months too, not even half a year. I wanted today's episode to be really special and I feel like this would be the perfect one to do that for because Mewtwo, as you all might know, is kind of a big deal in Ubers. One might say that Gen 1 Ubers even revolves around Mewtwo. And while the idea of just making Mewtwo stronger sounds incredibly boring, to my surprise, it's actually really interesting just seeing just how much of impact these two would make. Not so much because, like, no one, you know, is surprised by Mewtwo getting stronger, but because a species clause, if you have two very powerful Megas, but you could only use one of them, it really does beg the question, which one should you use? Is there even an objective, you know, choice? Or, can, or are both just completely viable? And it's more so the, the latter option, because both are very, very good in extremely different ways. And funny enough, because of the other one's inclusion, it actually does give, you know, both of them just legitimate problems, and it means that it can't just completely, like, warp the two around it. It's sort of like how Moridon and Koridon are both incredibly good and almost banworthy, except these guys, um, have way less competition. Like, that's for sure. They only really have each other, as well as the checks that normally, you know, annoy regular Mewtwo. Like, for example, Wagyu Mewtwo, depending on the moveset, really doesn't like Executor or Slowbro, or the normals, or like big threats to it. Meanwhile, for these guys, it's like half and half. As you would expect, the big physical fighting type doesn't really care that much about the normal types. Meanwhile, uh, with Mega Mewtwo Y, depending on what you give it, it really doesn't care about Slowbro or Executor. Or in Executor's case, even if you give Mega Mewtwo Y Thunderbolt, still not many ways Executor can really hurt you, outside of uh, using normal moves. In normal Mewtwo, it's technically a little bit of the best of both worlds. Like, it's physically bulkier than Mewtwo Y, but that's actually that's literally it. Or I guess it also it does contain the pure Psychic typing, meaning that you do resist Psychic instead of taking a neutral. So technically, it's a little bit bulkier, like theoretically, but essentially not really. You have no reason to ever just use Mewtwo on its own, unless you're just really scared about not knowing which Mewtwo you want to go up against, or that you're going to go up against. You just try to use like an all-rounder, but that's literally never going to happen. Like the benefits to using one of these guys very much outweighs their downsides. And what are their downsides? Mega Mewtwo X, for the most part, doesn't really have too much to really worry about. It's incredibly bulky, and it's just the strongest mix attacker. Not even just for Gen 1 Ubers. With base 190 attack and 154 special, it might just be just the strongest mix attacker of all time. And with a base 100 defense and 130 speed and 100, 106 you know, HP, and it's bulky as hell as well. And fast as hell. However, as you all might expect, that fighting typing, it's just annoyance. It's not a hindrance at all, like, believe it or not. In fact, Mewtwo X very much enjoys having the fighting type, and it absolutely is, ironically, what helps it make, make it one of the best Pokemon in just all of Gen 1. Which I know sounds crazy, because everyone knows the reputation with the fighting type, but Mega Mewtwo X pretty much solves all of, like, fighting types' weaknesses. The only, the only thing it doesn't really solve is, uh, having a very good fighting move. But even then, Mega Mewtwo X gets around it. For starters, because of the Psychic typing, he's not actually weak to, you know, Psychic. So the only thing he has to worry about is just Zapdos' draw pick exactly. And even then, Zapdos needs to get an Anjoti up in order for that to happen. And that's something that you can easily handle with the rest of your teammates. 
if you don't just KO Zapdos entirely. Because you can still win the matchup 1v1, albeit it's just still very annoying. And also, because of his high special, that's like another reason why the fighting type sucks so much. It's bad enough that they're weak to Psychic, but having well special means that even Slowbro or the Ice types or pretty much anything can just like kill them very easily. But obviously, with base 154 special, that's not gonna happen. So even though he's a physical attacker, that, that he can just, you know, not care too much about any special moves that, you know, that you try to use against him. Especially when both Mewtwo's have the exact same moveset, meaning that you can very well use Amnesia. And with 154 special, you could. There's like no reason why not to use it. Like, your attack stat's very good, but you can mostly use that just to take out, you know, normal types, as well as enemy Mewtwo Ys, which we will get to in a little bit. So, go for it. Just go for a special set with Amnesia and Psychic. And then you have extremely powerful uh, physical moves. You have Body Slam. You have Hyper Beam. Self-Destruct is massive. Like, Self-Destruct on a base 190 Pokemon? Are you kidding me? Not to mention Submission is actually not that bad. Even regular Mewtwo and actual Gen 1 Ubers sometimes use a Submission. Because it's a nice move to just, you know, like, annoy, uh, White Screen Chansey. As well as just having a lot of power points. Like, I believe Submission has, like, uh, yeah, 40 power points. That alone is insane. But now you have a Stab Submission on a base 190 attack Pokemon. And a gen where Pokemon like Snorlax, Matoros, and Chansey are the best Pokemon around. Yeah. Like, no need to, like, explain. Submission is just terrifying. And it pretty much can just delete any of the best Pokemon in the tier. And even though the accuracy is still very annoying and you have nothing against that, you do have one thing that the other fighting types don't have. And that's Reliable Recovery. Will you lose half your health if you Oko Chansey with Submission? Sure. But you're also faster than pretty much everything. And at the same time, Whenever you do take recoil, you can just heal it back with recover. Even if they take on a Mewtwo Y, you can still like you can still like recover. Like uh, you can probably survive one unboosted attack, or just switch into something else and heal later when you have a good opportunity. So overall, I'm sure a lot of you thought that you know uh, Mewtwo X lol fighting type sucks Gen One, it would struggle, but it's absolutely not. It has everything it could ever want. To be an odd physical attacker, to ironically be a good special attacker, just doing a better job with your normal counters, or just whatever you want. It's Mewtwo. It's incredibly versatile. The only thing it hates is having a low accurate move to have to use, and not resisting Psychic. Actually, there is one more thing it has to worry about, and that's where we go in the Mega Mewtwo Y. Ironically, even though it has 150 attack, I think Submission probably just isn't that good. Or at least for Tauros and Snorlax. Against Chansey, it absolutely could be used, you know, just to take them out a lot easier. But, like, you haven't noticed, Mega Mewtwo Y loses, like, a pretty, like, a decent amount of defense. So, Body Slam from Tauros and Snorlax still does a decent amount. So if Mega Mewtwo Y tries to go for submission, and then like take some recoil, and and the scary thing is because it has 150 attack, it'll still do a decent amount of damage, and thus a decent amount of recoil. But then you take that recoil, which is a fourth, and if Snorlax and uh, Tauros paralyze you with Body Slam, it's pretty much game over because then they can just kill you with Self Destruct or Hyper Beam. But on the bright side though, not only does Mega Mewtwo Y have an absolutely insane 194 special, but the other thing that Mega Mewtwo X has to really worry about is the fact that Mega Mewtwo Y is just a little bit faster. 140 speed, that only means that it just very consistently, you know, outspeeds Mega Mewtwo X, but also means you have an ever so slightly better crit rate. Which means that 1v1s between the two 
are slightly in Mega Mewtwo Y's favor. But then again, with teammates, and especially with paralysis and uh, mid defense stat by Uber standards, Mega Mewtwo X can still win. But it's personally, I'll recommend if you're using Mega Mewtwo X, just try to avoid you know the one v one for as long as possible. But it's still not bad. And even Mega Mewtwo Y, even with base seventy, you still have one hundred and six base HP. So while the defense is an issue. It is not um, Mega Detriment. At least, uh, I'm assuming it's not. Obviously, that speed is like, that makes it crazy. It makes it faster than Jolteon, Mega, Mega, Mega Mewtwo X. And not to mention, I believe you're tied with Electrode, which isn't too relevant. Unless, <laughs> unless you're really scared about Electrode paralyzing your Mega Mewtwo Y. So you want to win the speed tie, hit Electro with the Earth on the way first. And in that case, let's go. Like, I'm happy for you. Speaking of paralysis, along with Mega Mewtwo um, Y's defense, that's the other thing that really holds it back. Now for regular Mewtwo, it actually wants to be paralyzed for the most part. Because a paralyzed Mewtwo not only can't get frozen or put to sleep, but it gets Mewtwo, uh, you know, mirrors. It actually helps you with the uh, with the PP war, because a fourth of the time just not being able to move can actually help save you, you know, on power points a lot. So, for the most part, it's pretty much just Chansey, but a really powerful psychic type. The same can't really be said for Mewtwo Y, especially if the opposing Mewtwo X or opposing Mewtwo Y isn't paralyzed, because... Even though that defense stat, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world with your HP. Uh, Snorlax and Tauros's uh, Hyper Beams, they still do a lot. And I'm pretty sure Tauros and Snorlax's Hyper Beams on a critical hit might actually just Oko. If not Oko, I'm pretty sure it's in a damage range. So a Paralyzed Mewtwo Y is actually in a lot of danger. Because not only is it scary if Mega Mewtwo X can out finally outspeed... Meaning it can more reliably set up, you know, amnesias, or it can just murder you with self-destruct the hyper beam. But it also means that just normal types in general, or just any strong physical attacker, can do a lot of damage to you. And while you're still a big threat to it, because even with, you know, um, like your crippled speed, you still have the best crit rate in the game with the highest special in the game. Although I'm just gonna tell you right now, even for a Pokemon like Gengar. A non-critical psychic is still in a damage range. So don't just act like you can just like one shot anything every anyways. Even Pokemon like Rhydon can still like I'm I would imagine to have at least one non-critical psychic. And if it's faster, and if it can get two earthquakes off, that's kinda game over. Same thing with Mew. If Mega Mew 2Y is paralyzed, what really stops Mew from you know walking in using a sword stance and then KOing with you know explosion or earthquake. But, granted, you still do a lot of damage. So, it's not the worst thing in the world. Again, both of these guys are amazing. You have the Pokemon that was the most dominant in any tier ever. And you just make them even better. But even in these tiers, and even with regular Mewtwo, it's not just like, you know, it's not just like you're a kid on the playground. You just take it out and you just win everything. A meta still revolves around it. And people still have strategies to counter them. Or the very least check them or cause an, an annoyance. So, overall though, even though they both have their issues, and even though the existence of one of them, you know, like Brewery threatens the other, it's really hard to tell which one would actually be better. I would imagine Mega Mewtwo Y has the edge because, um, just because of just that speed, and only because of its speed. But at the same time, I feel like Mega Mewtwo X is just might be more consistent. Maybe not so much with submission, but even with you're just using like body slam or something, that still does a crazy amount of damage to Chansey. Not to mention, so for like Mega Me to X's counters, um, you know, like against like the normals, that also just helps your entire team in general, pretty much just deleting like a half of your opponent's team. Meanwhile, against Executor or Swobro, 
unless you want to use bolt beam so that you can handle both of them. You don't really handle your counters as well as Mega Me 2X does. Not to mention, if you go with bolt beam, if you go with bolt beam for Mega Me 2Y, guess who suddenly has a much better matchup against you? At the same time though, a submission, still, you know, like, uh, it's still submission. And Mega Me 2Y, uh, at the very least, worst case scenario, it only has something for Swellbro, not really Executor. So Executor just can't really hurt it, just annoying Mewtwo by putting in the sweep. Meanwhile, what does Mega Mewtwo X do? I mean, it has bolt beam coverage, but I feel like Stab Psychic is the only thing you really want to use. So I'm not sure if Amnesia and then like, you know, Bolt Beam or just one of the two is worth it. So for the most part, Mega Me 2 X doesn't really have anything that really threatens Executor other than a Critical Hyper Beam. Now granted, a Critical Hyper Beam would not be surprised if it Oko's, but still, you know, like not, not the thing you should be relying on. And I'm pretty sure other than Thunderbolt, which I would imagine would be incredibly rare if just not used at all, Mega Me 2 X just has nothing for, um, you know, Swobro. But then again, Mega Me 2 Y, like, is really scared of being KO'd by Body Slams or Hyper Beams. So it's, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty even. I would love to see what you guys think is the better one. I feel like I've made some pretty good arguments for both. Personally, even though I really, really hate its design, I'm actually going to lean towards Mega Me 2 X. Like, I'm not sure if it would be, like, actually better, but it's at least the one I would, would prefer. And if I had to use one of them while playing, I would definitely choose Mega Me 2 X, because just murdering stuff with some mission just sounds like a lot of fun. But man, that was, like, longer than I think I usually do. So I think it's time to, like, uh, actually get onto the replays. And I'm actually going to get scared that I'm going to run out of music before then. So, sorry if, like, the end of this has, like, nothing. But let's just go into the replays. Starting with Mewtwo versus Mewtwo, 1v1. A non-boosted Psychic only does like a third, which... I mean, if you only take it neutrally, I, I guess that's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, to no one's surprise, you only need two um, Amnesias for both of them to be maxed. One might even argue that Mewtwo Y doesn't even need like two Amnesias. Because just with one Amnesia, your specials are like 9, 12 or something. Which is insane. But obviously, for the most part, Mega Mewtwo Y will have a slightly better time 1v1. However, it can still change, and I have two other replays to show how, you know, that can be the case. Like here, you know, Mega Mewtwo tries to go for Amnesia, and a Critical Hyper Beam can just flat out just Oko Y. Which, which that's the fun part. If you don't know what the Mega Mewtwo X is running, you are never safe with literally a single Pokemon. And even then, even if you don't just, like, try to go for the kill with Hyper Beam, Body Slam can still be dangerous. Not to mention, like, uh, even though it's slower, it still has an insane crit rate, still, and still just fast in general. So, like, I, Mewtwo Y would probably still win most of the time, but I, I honestly don't know. I'm just gonna put this on Hyper Fast. Because it's a light screen chancy versus Mewtwo. We know how this usually goes. This this matchup is basically just, you know, the regular Mewtwo versus Chansey. Except probably like gets finished with a little bit faster because Mewtwo does have, you know, or Mega Mewtwo Y has such higher special than regular Chansey. But as you can see here, it's still really annoying. I mean, look at that. Like, Chansey already has, like, you know, like, a lot of lowered special, and it's still taking forever to actually kill it. And, e even if you do manage to kill it, Mewtwo has still wasted a lot of, you know, psychic power points. And Mega Mewtwo X would be faster at this point. So, yeah, just softening it up. Or, the opponent has an opposing Mega Mewtwo Y. Meanwhile, Mega Mewtwo X versus Chansey? Submission just Oko's. And look at that, that only does a third of your health, which, yes, that is completely massive, but you have recover, so it's not even like a big deal. You can just heal it off. And it's the same thing for others. Granted, it's still very dangerous if Tauros gets a paralysis, because then, you know, like, a critical hyperbeam can just kill you. 
At the same time, I think Tauros just doesn't risk fighting against like, Mega Me 2X at all. Because, like, you saw how much, you know, Body Swim did. It practically did nothing. Meanwhile, though, Mega Me 2Y, obviously a crit just murders Tauros. But it's very dangerous. And a Hyper Beam uh, does, a, like, a little bit more than half. So, admittedly, I thought it would take it a lot worse. And like I said before, a critical hyper beam just fight out Oko. So part of me almost wonders if Charles would just rather go for hyper beam immediately. Rather than, you know, try to hope for a paralysis of body slam. At the very least, I think if the Mewtwo is or Mewtwo Y is already paralyzed, it probably just goes for the kill immediately and tries to get lucky. Even if you lose your trolls in the process, I do think that is worth considering. And then Snorlax. Uh was that a crit? Yeah, that was a crit, and even a crit didn't actually Oko Snorlax. So that one should probably just show you just how insane it is. And also to my surprise, uh, Self Destruct also didn't Oko Mewtwo. But then again, at 3 HP, it might as well have. Meanwhile, for Mega Mewtwo X, like, <laughs> this might surprise you, but Submission does a lot. Like, uh, not as much as Chansey, but 80% it's still wild. And then Body Slam, I think it did a little bit more than um, Tor Toros. But it doesn't even matter. Like, granted, if Snorlax just immediately went for Self Destruct, it definitely means that Snorlax has the best matchup with the three normal types. But even then, you're still like completely sacrificing your Snorlax. Granted, Snorlax trade for a Mega Mewtwo is definitely a good one. But yeah, it's it, it could be worse. And like I said before, uh, to my surprise, Psychic isn't even a guaranteed KO. Granted, like a crit, no one's surprised would be. And Gengar just doesn't even risk it in the first place. But being able to do like half of Mega Mewtwo Y's health is nice. Obviously, Mega Mewtwo X isn't Oko either. Not to mention, depending on the set, Gengar just might not be able to even touch Mega Mewtwo X. Especially if it's only using like normal or fighting moves. But at the same time, Gengar wouldn't dare, you know, sw uh, risk switching in, unless it already knows. If it doesn't know what Mewtwo uses, then that's just how it gets killed by Psychic. So, like, I I'm not going to just only show matchups that are good in Mega Mewtwo X's favor. Obviously, Mega Mewtwo Y does better in some matchups, this being a prime example, because Drill Pack is very annoying, and if you get a crit, it can just very easily kill you. And while Mega Mewtwo Y does have lower defense, it takes Drill Packs way, way better. And even the speed, you know, the speed gap with agility isn't even like that annoying to it. Because Mega Mewtwo Y is still bulky enough to where it can, you know, survive hits from those. And just a single amnesia does that much to zap those. It's insane. But, like, I don't know why these Pokemon need such high, you know, um, like zap buffs. Or why they needed Megas at all. Like, really. Like, oh well, it's been like over 10 years. Who cares at this point? And another one where, you know, Mega Mewtwo X really suffers is Executor. Like, maybe with Amnesia, you might get lucky. But even then, you're probably not going to have Ice Beam. So you just have nothing to really hurt Mega Mute or to hurt Executor with. And that's how much Hyper Beam did. A non critical did like 49. So crit probably does kill, like I've said before, but uh, don't don't bother risking it. Your Mega Mewtwo X is way too valuable. And then meanwhile, for Mega Mewtwo Y, it is hilarious seeing just how little damage Psychic does. And even with like Double Edge, Double Edge like might do some damage, but ironically, it would probably just do more to Executor. Because you think about like how high you know. Um, Mega Me 2 Y's HP is, and with well with defense, it would be taking damage, but you would also be soaking up a lot of those hits. So it's only really Executor who takes a lot of damage, and at that point, it's more so just Mewtwo winning the wake up and just finish it off. And the last replay I have is for Slowbro. I did in the bottom doing all of Gen One Ubers, especially not for two whole whole ass Pokemon. But like, I don't even know what to say here. Like, Mega Me 2X, it can 
have high special with Swobro, but that still doesn't really solve the issue of you just not being able to hurt it, especially when the Swobro isn't paralyzed when you are. Best case scenario, Swobro just pee pee stalls you. So, just it's just a really bad matchup. I don't I don't think I can call it unwinnable, or maybe I don't know. It feels weird to call like any Mewtwo matchup unwinnable, but I don't know. And then for Mewtwo Y, there's just like nothing Swarbro can do. It just sits there and lets Mewtwo build up its special. Granted, I'm sur even with like two Amnesias, I'm surprised. Surprised Thunderbolt, you know, like doesn't even like uh, put it in the red. Oh, you yeah, also crits. Crits are also a thing. If a Mega Mewtwo Y gets a crit, uh. I think Swellbro like would probably die, but you guys can like tell me in the in the calcs if a Mega Mewtwo Y using a Critical Thunderbolt does more than five percent to Swellbro. Now this is the tier list from last episode, and for this one, I decided that I'll just do it live, especially since I'm be doing two different Pokemon. Starting with Mega Mewtwo X, it feels weird putting it on Winnable. I feel like it's in between these two, but I'll just put Meg I'll just put Swarbro there. I'll put Executor in bad. Just because like getting a crit could help you. Same with like a body some paralysis. Boyster is quite good. Especially if you're using, you know, submission, just a crazy amount of damage. Jinx, I would also probably put in good. Because like your physical moves, especially on a crit, just murder. Starmie. Mmm. I, Starmie's probably in bad because Starmie has Thunder Wave, Recover. It can hit. It can still like you know like chip you with like Psychic or something. But overall, not the worst thing in the world. Uh, Zapdos, I'll put in bad. Rhydon probably good. I don't have much to say. I don't have much to say about Jolteon either. Like Jolteon only just paralyzes Mega Mewtwo X, and that's about it. So I guess I'll put Jolteon in good. Uh. Alakazam is probably good matchups too, because it's just so physically frail. Oh, the crits could be annoying on Mega Mewtwo X, but I don't think it worries about them as much. And then all three of the normals are definitely in great. There's no doubt about it. Or actually, maybe... I feel like at least one of these should be in Kukui either way. I don't really know. This is probably good enough. So, Mega Mewtwo Y, on the other hand... Uh... The normal stuff we go to could go either way. Well, it definitely does like beat Chansey 1v1. Uh, White Screen Chansey also just drains so much of Mega Mewtwo Y's resources. Same thing with these two, it just depends on the moveset. Zapdos, I'll put in good. Same thing with Jolteon. Uh, Alkazam would be great. Same thing with Koyster. Jinx probably could go either way. A good matchup for uh, Starmie. And I know Gemwin Ubers has other Pokemon that are usually, you know, um, good. Like, but not usually good in, uh, Ubers. Like, I think you see more, like, uh, Dragonite and whatnot. Oh, by the way, we should probably put Mewtwo for could go either way, representing both Megas. And as for Mew? Hmm. I, if it's, if it's Mega Mewtwo X, Mew would probably be good matchups. But if it's Y, it probably goes to could go either way. Or potentially even bad matchup. Or no, probably not bad matchup. Even without like Psychic, like uh, Amnesia boosted with um, Ice Beam or Thunderbolt would do a crazy amount of damage. It really just depends on if the Mega Mewtwo Y is paralyzed or not. But what do you think? Which Mega Mewtwo do you think would be superior? Do you think both would be equally as good? Or do you think one would have a good enough edge where you can say, Yes, that one is the superior Mewtwo. I don't know how long this video is. But I definitely feel like I tried making uh, the best points I could. At the very least, Mega Mewtwo X. Sorry if it seems like I had bias. I don't really. I think both of them are incredibly good. And my gut feeling does tell me that Y would be better. But I already knew that most of you would probably assume Y would be better. So I feel like I just had to like... Especially use better arguments for X because I had to justify its finding typing. And I feel like I did a, bit, a pretty good job. But you can let me know what you think in the comments. To celebrate just 100 episodes of the stupid series, later today in my Discord server, I'm going to be having a big VC. 
We're going to be trying to play like a Jackbox, and if that doesn't work, probably another game like Among Us or like Gartic Phone or something. It'll be at um 3 p.m. uh anywhere from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. We'll probably be going on for a lot later than that. So really, join the Discord server. Like I would love to have you and like ch chat with you. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to let me know in the comments which one you think would be better. And until ground. And until Groundback, what the heck? And until next time, this is Groundback, and I look forward to hearing from you. Oh, did I mess up that badly? Jesus Christ.